Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. To start things off, BitMEX used to be the indisputable leader of the Bitcoin futures trading market. And if something similar to yesterday's crazy situation were to happen back in 2015 to 2018, the crypto markets would have completely collapsed, regardless of the partial recovery to 10,600 US dollars, which was relatively quick. Derivatives markets held steady during the $500 drop to 10,400 US dollars. Neither Bitcoin futures nor options displayed any signs of discomfort to the negative news. And thank goodness they didn't because the news shouldn't have moved the markets at all. The futures markets nearly ignored the entire event. And this is a strong indicator that investors remain bullish. It also suggests that the markets will be testing 12,000 US dollars per Bitcoin sooner than one might expect. There's that little chart right there. As shown above, BitMEX held nearly 50% of the market share until July 2019. This advantage came from being the precursor of the so-called perpetual contracts market. In addition to not requiring KYC, oh, okay, well, this makes sense why they were targeted. The derivatives exchange also offered up to 100x leverage, and this helped in growing a vast user base. Well, that kind of explains it. All the news that we got yesterday didn't really ever say that they didn't require uh, know your customer uh, activity on their platform. And I'm also going to assume there was no um, AML either, which is, as we all know, a big no-no for regulators. After the drop, around, it was about March, early March, where Bitcoin fell to $3,600, which was also complete nonsense. Uh, competitor exchanges scrambled to offer similar services, and this led to BitMEX losing its dominant position throughout 2019. It takes it, it takes Bitcoin almost collapsing in price for other people to be like, oh, maybe they just shouldn't be the leader. Maybe we should also be doing the exact same thing so that we can spread out the money throughout the entire market. Makes sense. Some in the crypto community believe that BitMEX's ban on UX clients was the primary culprit for the loss of market share, and others point to the aggressive liquidation engine as a catalyst. Well, I probably assume they did the ban on the US customers or clients because they were probably told or given a letter by the CME, um, not the CME, the uh, CFTC before uh, as to that they were doing something potentially legal and therefore just kick Americans out of it. And therefore, you'll be able to kind of do business. Uh, where is the other really crazy part? And then they talk about the the, the price drop and, 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 and so on and so forth. So the prices of, of our market, not the futures markets, have begun to recover, of course, because the entire drop was completely ludicrous. And I, and I, and I think what we continue seeing and what we're going to continue seeing forever and ever is type of a... Um, like a fear chain. I think if one person is afraid enough, they kind of release the news that other people should be afraid. And and I, and I know it even sounds ridiculous and people are like, well, I don't think that's what it is. But I think that's exactly what it is. What other reason would there be? Like, why did our market even drop at all when a cryptocurrency exchange had a problem, regardless of how much they actually had? And the people were asking why I didn't go over the the main news from yesterday, that's because this is not a political channel, and I avoid all of that so that we can simply talk about money and making money, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It would make more sense to me, as I explained to my friend last night, that Bitcoin and other markets would have risen based off of that news on the potential that there could have been a problem in the traditional financial markets because of what took place or the news that we received yesterday as opposed to Bitcoin dropping because of a cryptocurrency exchange getting a letter or having been walked into by the CFTC. Anyway, the point is, as it stands right now, the prices are, are inching their way back up. I assume we'll see where this will go uh, by the rest of the weekend, if not by Monday. A lot of articles floating around uh, with this $12,000 number, saying that Bitcoin is soon going to test 12000 It was also a lot of uh, Plan B news. A lot of people are becoming very... Ansi. Ansi is the, 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 the very correct word as to when the market is going to completely lose its mind. Also tying directly into this, um, since the U.S. government's levy charges against BitMEX and its leadership for violating AML laundering laws, over 45,000 Bitcoin have been withdrawn from BitMEX. 
October 1st brought two devastating blows to the derivatives exchange BitMEX. First, the CFTC and the Department of Justice brought charges against the exchange. Shortly thereafter, its founders, including Arthur Hayes, were indicted by the U.S. government. The market reacted to the news with a sharp decline across many of the blockchain's biggest assets. According to data from Crystal Blockchain, in less than 48 hours, the net outflow from BitMEX has exceeded 45,000 Bitcoin. Meanwhile, Gemini and Binance, I think it's also Kraken was one of them as well, um, with OKEX and Huobi have pretty much received nearly all of that uh, Bitcoin that was outflowed. Really interesting is that Coinbase was not mentioned in any list that I was looking for as far as who received all of that Bitcoin that was withdrawn from BitMEX. It was always Gemini, Binance, Kraken, OKEX, and uh, Huobi. As one might have logically assumed, uh, when the fear is great enough and when people realize that they should have done something before, uh, they begin to do it. Um, I expected an outflow of Bitcoin. I actually expected more. I think logically there should... If, if, if BitMEX had or has at some point... Uh, 180,000, as I was being quoted multiple times across multiple uh, comment sections and also on Twitter. If they really did have that much Bitcoin, they probably, like, all of it should have nearly left their exchange, especially with something as uh, serious, air quotes, as this event uh, taking place. 45,000 Bitcoin is a huge amount. I think the number that came out, it was half a billion US dollars equivalent amount of the amount of Bitcoin that they were actually um, holding. Yeah, I don't know the entire story. I, I, I mean, we, we, we never really spoke about BitMEX, but I assume... How, how, how do I say this? It, it feels a bit like a witch hunt, if that kind of makes any sense. Um, but at the same exact time... No, not even. Uh, apparently, you know, if they, if they try to tell people within the U.S., hey, stop using us because you can't use us, it, it, it feels like this is kind of a, well, we're going to come after you anyway because, you know, we are the hand of the law and therefore we can back smack you uh, as we see fit. Um, it is what it is. You know, we are not in control of the situation, so why not? Uh, also tying, these all tie, of course, together because the last two days have been a, a mess with the drop of cryptocurrency prices and people trying to figure out why prices dropped in general and whenever we get to a situation this is why i always say this or why i get like i'm like okay why, why did prices drop this time because whenever we see prices drop a day and a half later they're going back up and it's like well you know maybe there really wasn't as much fear as people thought in the market maybe the drop was simply fraudulent like imagine being terrified of something of something happening the 48 hours later like oh that's fine it's okay none of it ever happened like Clearly, this drop was in some ways fraudulent as well, what have you. Yeah, so tying directly into what we've just been talking about in really weird news. On Friday, the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, made a fraudster pay back $7.4 million to investors while vowing to protect the Bitcoin market. Per the CFTC's announcement, uh, James McDonald, director of the Commission's Enforcement Division, said, and I quote, the CFTC will continue working to protect our markets, including the burgeoning markets for digital assets such as Bitcoin from fraudulent schemes, and will work in parallel with our criminal law enforcement colleagues where appropriate, uh, end quote. The news, the popular point of the news being that the CFTC openly came out and said that they are going to work to protect Bitcoin markets. A lot of people believe that this has to, um, listen, I and many other people believe that we are seeing the forthcoming regulations hitting very, very hard. Uh, there are far too many people buying up massive amounts of Bitcoin. There are far too many instances right now around the world where regulators are actively saying, hey, we have to release a central bank digital currency, or we have to protect our markets, or we are going to list Bitcoin, or Bitcoin is going to be this, or we are integrating with Ethereum. There's far too much of it happening all at the exact same time. The The timing, once again, is very, it's, it's, it's like an opposite end of the stick for 2000, the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, remember when the cryptocurrency market, sorry, someone was, was mentioning that I was talking rather fast in yesterday's video. I do apologize. It's how I normally speak. I have to slow it down for the videos. Um, I'm used to talking fast. And what happened in the beginning of 2018 was that after the cryptocurrency market went completely insane, uh, regulators were not too happy. So they started releasing news and information that they were either going to ban crypto or stop crypto or regulate crypto. Any, any you know, 
matter of those three. Uh, but the how coordinated it was showed me that they had all spoken to each other before in a in a dark closed room to talk about regulations because it happened. I think every Tuesday, every week, it was a brand new country uh, who kept on coming forward saying we're going to do it. Now we're going to do it, and it, the the timing was just too uh, insane. So now that everything has been happening within the last month or so, very closely packed together tells me that regulations were on their way in general, but now we're just kind of seeing it. But the weird part is, is that we're no longer seeing, we're no longer seeing a pushback directly against Bitcoin. It's more against things that are harming Bitcoin, i.e. the news that uh, there, there's some person, I'm not going to even say that this person's name, who is being charged by the CFTC uh, for frauding people. He's being charged. The entire thing with BitMEX. They did something bad against the Bitcoin markets. We are here to save the Bitcoin markets. You understand what I'm saying? It's this kind of news all the time now, which kind of is like, okay, well, clearly they've accepted it. I still think that the higher-ups are in possession of it. Like, they hold huge amounts of it, and therefore, it is now being guarded. Um, but that's just how I feel in this situation. Anyway, yeah. Uh, weird news that the CFTC openly said Bitcoin as like a, yeah, we're going to protect your market. Um, we'll see where this leads us. I think in, in, in a couple of years, it will be abundantly clear. But as of right now, of course, we have to speculate because we have nothing else but speculation to go on. Next up, in unsurprising news, DeFi may be dominated by Ethereum, but Tezos is making a play to attract users with lower fees and faster transactions, Tezos Stable Technologies, a subsidiary of the newly launched Tezos Stablecoin Foundation, charged with advancing DeFi developments on the Tezos blockchain, closed a successful seed round today. Venture capital firm Draper Gorin Holm announced the amount was not disclosed. It's the first step on the road to building a Tezos DeFi ecosystem to compete with the development on and around the Ethereum blockchain in hopes of drawing off some of the billions in liquidity that have so far gone almost exclusively towards Ethereum-based designs. Um, tying into the news that I've been seeing, I haven't put them in the videos because it would be completely nonsensical to do so. A lot of people are writing articles, a lot of articles, a lot of news stories right now about how terrible Ethereum is, how slow Ethereum is, how Ethereum 2.0 won't do a thing, how Ethereum, Ethereum, how Ethereum 2.0 won't be relevant until the year 2022 to 2024, and therefore other coins have to step in. I assume that a lot of these articles are being written by people who either do not like Ethereum, don't hold Ethereum, or hold a large amount of some other coin. Not this person in particular who wrote this article, but I have been seeing them floating around a lot as we have gotten closer to the news that we are apparently are very close to Ethereum 2.0 launching within the next what is that, four to six weeks, which is completely insane to even think that it could be happening within that time frame. Uh, since then, we've seen multiple other chains coming forward announcing that they are going to be competing with Ethereum in some sort of way. We had news that the people from Ripple are potentially creating other side chains to make their own DeFi thing. We've had people, for, or rather, news about Bitcoin that people are going to be building other chains aside Bitcoin to be able to capture the DeFi market. We've had it from Cardano. We've had it from EOS. We've had it from Lumens, maybe? I think there was even an IOTA news story floating around out there as well. So, of course, it's not surprising. Atron was also one, of course, as well, uh, that Tezos would be joining the, the, the pool that's already quite crowded. The issue is, is that no one really cares about these other coins in that manner. Not to say that they are not useful, wonderful, or amazing. It's more that for some reason Ethereum continues to get all of the market share. Of course, other people may be building coins on some of the other projects, but for some reason Ethereum is continuing to dominate even when we've had news that fees have risen to $11, $12, $13, $14, $15 US dollars per transaction. So I don't think in the short run, maybe even the semi-long run, that these are going to really do anything per se, question mark, um, as far as if we do get Ethereum 2.0, I think the other coins trying to get into this space will be completely washed away. No one will even think about them. However, at the same exact time, I still think Tezos is, um, uh, I, I, I think Tezos is made as a corporation coin because of all the, all, all the companies and all the, the situations. When, when Tezos was first released, it was welcomed with open arms by the people from Coinbase and Binance. 
And then we got news the next day that I think Coinbase was one of the, what was it? One of the leading members in their ICOs or they like put the most funding towards their ICO. So that tells me that they probably allegedly have a huge amount of Tezos themselves and therefore they want to see Tezos continue. This is, this is why I, I consider Tezos like a corporation coin because it was made by major players in the space as having their own coin but also something to be able to say, hey, we can also do that too. Um, so the only way that I would see DeFi on Tezos really taking off is that if all the, the players who I believe back to this initiative to create Tezos simply start making their own DeFi platforms on top of it, which is why I also believe many of the other coins like YearnFi and WiFi and yada, 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 fi uh, were also created by the big players as well as a way to say, hey, we also have this as well. Give us your money because ours is better and faster and stronger. So... The point being, uh, Tezos has now entered the the game, and they are going to try and make something DeFi like on top of it, and we'll see what happens. E Ethereum is 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 doing extremely well right now, uh, DeFi wise. <laughs> uh, the the news I don't even know if I mentioned it before. I think there's now what is it two to three billion dollars worth of value locked inside of uh, protocols that are built on top of Ethereum. Because uh, Ethereum continues to grab that market share. Regardless of what people think about Ethereum, it's going to continue to do well. Um, the same exact thing with all the other countries who keep announcing that they're building things on top of Ethereum. It's, it's abundantly clear that Ethereum at this point, for what it's worth, is basically a, a country corporation coin. Because, you know, they're all betting really heavily on it. In mega popular news that I just don't get why it was so popular... Uh, cryptocurrency, this is a weird photo for it as well. Cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase announced in a blog today that it now offers instant withdrawal features to its customers in nearly 40 countries, including the United States, the UK, and across Europe. While some users welcomed the move, other traders complained about the platform's high transaction fees. In fact, in the United States, Coinbase deducts a 1.5% fee from the transaction that's that's a huge amount of money or a minimum of 55 cents from small transactions in the uk and europe the instant withdrawal feature is available for a fee of two percent or a minimum of 45 cents in the uk and 52 cents across europe one coinbase user stated they they, they tweeted about it and then someone said the two percent fee is a tad steep for what is oh gosh they wrote for what is in all intents and purposes, they spelled it completely incorrectly, a fee for something other exchanges do already for far less, and why the difference between US and UK customers? That's because the pound and the euro have a different... Is this a real question? They're, they have different values. Historically, the pound has been stronger than the euro, and this is why they're not on par with each other. This is why sometimes you see if something is... Twenty four ninety nine within America, it may be nineteen ninety nine or twenty two ninety nine within the UK. It's because the UK pound is also stronger than the US dollar. The point is, um, yes, the news that Coinbase now has instant withdrawals on their on their platform is everywhere. Like if you type in Coinbase Instant, you'll find tons of news stories about it. I, I get the significance of it, but this this should have happened years ago. There was no reason for them not to have instant withdrawals on every single platform. Uh, working our way backwards, um, the two percent fee is a little insane. Like, think if you were like think think of the cryptocurrency space goes completely insane, and in two and a half years you have a million dollars, a million pounds, a million euros on the platform, and you're trying to withdraw, and you get a two percent fee on your money. That's a huge chunk of change. Like, this is, I don't know, I'm I'm, I'm really not sure why anyone still uses Coinbase. Like people have told me before, like Coinbase is really easy. Coinbase is really simple. I've seen the user interface. I've gone on there before to see what it's like. It's incredibly simple. Like I get it. But wouldn't it make a bit more sense to learn another user interface? Even if it took you eight minutes, you would save yourself tens of thousands of dollars if you were removing large amounts of money from that platform. Here's the actual blog post for it right here. On Medium, it says Coinbase now offers instant withdrawals. I think that's absolutely wonderful. But we also had instant withdrawals before if you were just transacting the crypto between yourself and your friend. It was never like a 25-minute wait time in the first place. 
Coinbase also has insane fees. What was the other thing we were talking about before? I think it was for for it was for Tezo staking. Didn't they have like a twenty five percent fee? And I saw people in the comment section be like, "Well, twenty five percent is not that high." What what world are you living in? It's the same exact thing. If you've ever had a mutual fund before, when you're looking for mutual funds, you want to look for like an actual mutual fund that has a fee that's less than like zero point two five percent. Like it should be absolutely minuscule that you won't really feel it as you're withdrawing or as you're actually using uh, these people to manage your fund. Like zero point, like this should be the actual fee. Like a zero, not even that. Zero point two five percent should be the withdrawal fee. Two percent is insane. A twenty five percent fee on something on on something that you're staking on their platform is insane. Especially when once again, hello, uh, Binance has a zero percent fee when it comes to staking Tezos. Why would you even think, why, why would you let somebody take 25% of your money? How does that make sense? Anyway, yeah, super popular news. Uh, good job on the instant withdrawals, but no one should be using, like there are many other platforms that are regulated and secure within your borders, I'm sure. Especially how many times, have, I think there are two other cryptocurrency exchanges within the United Kingdom uh that are remember we got all the news like we are legally compliant we did so and so and so we went through her majesty's yada 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 like they are also very compliant so especially within the, the, the united states there's binance us it may not be available in every single state but gosh darn it wouldn't you rather save anyway that's the coinbase news and let's move on also in quite uh popular news right now an ex goldman sachs trader says investors with deep pockets are buying Bitcoin and gold as stores of value. In an interview with Kitco News, Drawbridge Lending CEO Jason Urban says he's now witnessing big investors betting on gold and Bitcoin at an equal pace. He says, as someone dealing in the institutional space, the same people that I see buying gold and other precious metals are also buying Bitcoin and they're doing it simultaneously and they're doing it in equal amounts currently. A changing economic client is triggering new investments in both assets. According to Urban, he says these types of defense if assets serve as a leverage amid the financial volatility brought on by 19. He said, I take the defensive stance, the defensive stance, because what we're currently seeing is really, truly unprecedented and we haven't gotten uh, completely through the snake, so to speak. I like traditional hedges against inflation like precious metals, silver, gold, but I also like the new alternatives like Bitcoin and other digital assets. He also explains why he places Bitcoin and gold in the same asset category class. Uh, what, 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 do I, what do I really say? Um, this year has been economically a cluster. You know the next word. Um, the news that we've gotten from the Federal Reserve that they expect all of this to go on and that they're going to have to prop up the markets for the next three years is a very huge indication, end of vacation, indication of probably what's to uh, come. The news that we've seen uh, before with many investors talking about that they expect or that have you seen, or were we, were we going over it, or was that simply just me and my friends, uh, that many investors think that we are going to be in a tumultuous, volatile stock market uh, for the next four to five years. I don't know if I went over that with all of you. Uh, the idea is, is that many investors, as we've seen, this is why I said it was kind of weird that so many people were backing Bitcoin. I, I, I think the backing of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space also has to do with the fact that many world leaders, if not world regulators, if not world investors, they, they see clearly that markets aren't going to bounce back uh, from 19, that the uh, what's happened has been far too devastating, and, and we are also well overdue for a normal stock market crash. Like this isn't like a like the the amount of debt flowing around in the world. Like it's not just 19 that's causing all of this. Like it's everything that's compiled up over the last 11 years that was never fixed when the other event took place. Uh, so uh, the point to be made is that. Um, it feels like to me that they know what's coming or what's going on or behind the scenes. It's kind of like um, if you listen to once again to like interviews and stuff like that from people who were dealing in the banking sector, like especially like employees trying to find some documentaries from 2008, 2009. They, 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 they spoke to employees in 2014, 15 and 16 about the, the crash. And they were like, did you all know? And they, they sit there and they would fit, you know, fiddle their thumbs and go, I, 
I simply can't answer that. And they would go, did you know that a crash was going to happen? And they, they all knew. They all had indications that, that, that the charts were showing that things were going to completely collapse. And they did what they could over the course of months, if not a year and some change, to keep things propped up. To make, them seem, like, to, to make them seem like everything was okay. Other people pushed their money into the markets and they slowly drained everything. These were the same exact people. Do you, do you re remember the news stories around, you must, you must, around 2012, 13, and 14, uh, when the property sector, that, that is to say the, 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 the real estate market around the world began to like slowly go back up and slower, slower uh, stocks and all these other things. It's because these, these people figured out how to time everything. They knew exactly how much of their money to take out all the time to not crash stock markets in 2008 and 2009. And also to be able to have all of their capital back so that when prices did reach rock bottom, that they were the people who then bought back up these stocks. And this is why they became even richer than they were before. Um, so that I, I believe that they're doing the exact same thing right now. Not only selling their stocks, because if, if you get any indication that stocks and mutual funds and, and bonds, especially bonds... And potentially even the real estate sector are going to continue to or going to do bad and may do even worse over the next four to five years. You start to hedge your bets with gold and with Bitcoin. But what happens is, is that Bitcoin is extremely finite. And if all these people are buying up Bitcoin, then we end up getting into those insanely large Bitcoin numbers. And at that point, this is when we, you know, the ball just keeps rolling because there won't be a, a cash out of Bitcoin because you can already buy everything with Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin continues to do well, then, you know, well... You just stay inside of Bitcoin. So uh, I assume we'll see more news like this. We've been seeing it the entire time. I think what maybe throws people off sometimes is that we don't see numbers for things like this. Like this guy isn't like, well, me and my company bought 22,000 Bitcoin. So I mean, but even then, whenever we get news that one company bought 17,000 Bitcoin, the price will drop that day because people are like, meh, you know, it's not, it's not that exciting. It's like, no, all these rich people are buying up huge amounts of it, but they're buying it over the counter. They're not buying it on cryptocurrency exchanges. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the gold and Bitcoin news, as it were. And let's move on. In odd news, I don't really know how to take this news. Uh, the Zimbabwean Stock Exchange CEO, Justin Bugoni, uh, says it recently licensed, its recently licensed subsidiary, the, Victor the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange, it's open to listing Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. However, according to local media reports, any such listings are still dependent on the digital asset, the asset issuers getting regulatory approval. Oh, now this makes sense. You'll see why. The report does not provide any details of requirements that cryptocurrency issuers must meet for their respective tokens to get listed. Furthermore, some in Zimbabwe's small crypto community are still skeptical about the announcement, especially since it is not coming from the regulators. Others say the statement... Attributed to the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange executive exposes the limited understanding of decentralized cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Because did you see what I read? Uh, in order to get your stuff listed, you have to. Uh, he wants to talk to the issuers of said cryptocurrency. How do you talk to the issuers of Bitcoin? How do you get Bitcoin listed on? You, you talk to Satoshi Nakamoto. This is why they said, you know, it exposes their limited understanding of what a decentralized cryptocurrency. Uh, is the point is this was this was relatively popular. We're seeing a lot more news coming out of Africa right now. Uh, I assume this is maybe the regulators beginning to get it and or them realizing that there's a huge amount of money uh, to be made in this market. Um, what was it? I think it was no, no, I can't remember the other country we're talking about two days ago. Uh, yeah. This also kind of follows the news that we had from the other country yesterday, who was also making their own decentralized stock exchange, which apparently has launched. I saw an article saying that it has launched. I don't know if they were simply uh, jumping the jumping the carpet. I don't know. They jumped something. Anyway, yeah. Uh, a lot of these stock exchanges, and this isn't one of them, who we heard last year, who said that they were going to be getting into the cryptocurrency space, have been relatively silent. I'm not sure if they're afraid of scaring their clients saying that we are moving on to crypto or if it's simply that they're waiting for more regulatory approval. I'm not sure what it is, but at some point, every single stock exchange is going to have a, a Bitcoin area, a cryptocurrency trading uh, portioned area. But maybe they, they are also just afraid. You know, like what happens to your currency when you tell other people this is legitimate, you can get into this as well. Like imagine the, the Zimbabwean dollar against Bitcoin. 
it's going to be decimated. And if, I mean, you know, that's kind of just history. Anyway, yeah, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange might at some point, or their subsidiary, the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange, might at some point list cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's easier to do it for other cryptocurrencies because they all have a face, uh, but Bitcoin doesn't have a face. Anyway, let's move on. And to finish things off, this should not cause anyone to gasp. None of you. Cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase UK will disclose customer data da- data, data to the um, HMRC or Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, which is the UK's tax authority, in response to the British tax authority's legal notice according to the crypto tax alert published on Twitter. That was a very long sentence. Here's uh, Coinbase's announcement. Uh, it says apparently something was sent to every UK Coinbase user who received received more than five thousand pounds worth of crypto during 2019 to 2020 tax year. This includes purchases or deposits. So, yeah. In an email which was sent to its UK customers, Coinbase informed its customers, geez, uh, that it would pass over details to the HMRC of those who received more than five thousand pounds in cryptocurrency between 2019 and 2020. The crypto exchange said in the email that the HMRC originally asked the exchange to provide certain records of its UK users between 2017 and 2019, but the exchange was able to work with the UK tax authority to revise the notice and reduce its scope. Now the exchange is required to disclose the details of only those UK customers that meet certain minimum requirements. So a little weird. Um, because it's, it's like, it's just, if you had the money put onto your account, not if you were even trading with it, it's like, if you have over 5,000 in crypto on Coinbase, we kind of want to know about it. not even kind of like we want to know about it. Um, not really much to say that I should be saying, but, um, yes, no one should be shocked at this information because, Every country is getting in line very rapidly. But now we've gotten to the point where they want to know how much you have. So that is also quite interesting. Anyway, uh, that is the Coinbase UK news. And let us move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Bolero Bastos, Crayola Michelle URL, On Crypto with Lionel, Tigger Macho Nisa, Bake Me a Cake, Arf Medic 17, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Bodie McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Man Jalavori, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Wish III, Setsuna, Damien, Crypto Artist Coldy 3D, Bankroll Network, 242 to the World, Wise Knight Owl, Jared Schneider, Master Ventures in Thailand, Moher Moroni, Adam Grasic, Todd Mullis, A Bibliophobia, the Animal Reader, John Sarsen, Nostromo, Martin Steuer, Joshua Vineyard, Moonman High, XRP, Utopia 569, Oscar Baldonado, Utopia, nope, just read that one, Yasha Harari, Attila the Han, David James, Navarro Williams, Decentralized, Peter, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Tolek Banan, and Professor Wally from Gunbot University. Thank you all very, very much for your support. And thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. And thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links at the moment. If I can ever scroll back up there, Bitcoin is up by 0.21%. It is trying to recover from everything that happened over the last couple of days. Uh, Many coins are still following the exact same movement of Bitcoin. And it looks like Bitcoin has to do a bit better uh, in price movements in order for the rest of the market to truly recover. Many of the altcoins are in red, but it's not a very strong red. It's a 0.5, 0.5, 1.3. Like it's nothing... Uh, historically detrimental price-wise. Tron is up by 7%. I didn't see any Tron news. It must have to do something with maybe some DeFi platform launched. Who knows at the exact moment. Yeah, the market's not looking terrible. It's also a weekend, so things might be a bit more lull when it comes to prices and stuff like that. But we will see where all of this takes us as we move through the weekend. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. A great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. There we go. Make sure to do something nice with your day. Go outside. Go for a walk. Go just do something 
that makes you happy because uh, you know how the world is. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.